My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to America. Other people want to make friends, just trying to make some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you, so call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Believe it or not, prudence is a virtue. I can't believe I have to say that on a financial television show. But lately, the concept of prudence, it is under attack. <laughs> Including on a sedate day like today, Dow dipped 153 points, but S&P just backslid 0.18%. NASDAQ edge just down 0.09%. Yep, tonight we need to talk about why being prudent with your money is a virtue, not a vice. I wish I didn't have to be the adult in the proverbial room, but this is what the investment world has now come to. One of the first things I ever learned in this business is that nobody ever got hurt taking a profit. I always thought that seemed like common sense. You know what? My view on it actually dates back pre-stock market. It dates to the days when I played the slots in Atlantic City with my ma. When we hit big, she'd say, come on, Jimmy, let's go out and buy a sweater. She never wanted to give a big win back to the casino, not when cashmere was on the line. And my ethos uh, is that you have to do a lot of soul searching before you go against your mother, particularly on these kinds of issues. Then when I got to Goldman Sachs, one of my bosses, Roy Zuckerberg, called me in not long after I started out because he noticed that I've been recommending some pretty aggressive ideas. He told me stocks aren't vacuum cleaners. If they break, you can't take them back. No warranty. So you got to be careful with your recommendations. That's where I got the phrase caveat emptor, buyer beware when it comes to the stock market. Finally, when I was at my old hedge fund, I learned from my trading partner, Karen Kramer, a lesson that's become a key mantra here on Mad Money. And that is that bulls make money, ah. bears make money, ah. but hogs, they get slaughtered. Now, that's one of the oldest lessons on the trading desk, but it always seems to come as a surprise to younger investors because they often don't realize that they are being hogs. When you trade like a hog, you tend to become somebody else's ham or bacon long before you would have expected it. You can bet with stocks, you can bet against stocks, but please, once you've made a lot of money, you take some to the bank. These are core tenets for me. That's why five months ago, I called in from my hospital bed at NYU Langone and said it was time to ring the register on GameStop when the stock was at 400 bucks. See, I thought that was common sense. But the meme stock guys saw it as a declaration of war against them. I just ripped out my catheter so I could have a little more focus. Remember, at the time, GameStop was up uh, more than 1,700 percent. Remarkable run. So I figured people should take something off the table. I didn't even think it. Think it was anything. I mean, not a lot. Let's put it this way: not long before I went into surgery, it was for a burst cyst in my spinal column. I'd admonish the short sellers in GameStop for being pigs. They'd watch the video game retailer stock down to near oblivion, but they kept betting against it, assuming it'd be like shooting fish in a barrel. The shorts didn't take their gains while they had them, and they were obviously being pigs. And in January, those little piggies got slaughtered. Now, suddenly, I was saying the same thing about the Bulls, who'd watch their favorite stock go from the single digits to 400. Truthfully, it was one of the best calls I ever made. GameStop swiftly fell to 40 bucks less than a month later. But the GameStop's fan base from Wall Street Bets, it doesn't matter that I was correct. It's meaningless. To them, anyone who recommends selling is the enemy, which is why I've become a hated figure on Reddit's Wall Street Bets, probably the most hated person in their universe. And that's the betting sheet that ground, uh, that's ground zero for meme stock investing. According to these younger investors, or at least I assume they're younger, given that it's all anonymous, selling GameStop is just an outright sin, no matter how much money has been made. They hate those on the other side of the trade, particularly short sellers, but also baby boober guys like me who cancel people that take some profits because of my core tenants. In other words, my learned behavior is worthless to these people who castigate anyone who tries to help them, even when those people turn out to be right. You could have saved yourself a fortune if you sold GameStop at 400 and bought it back at 40. Now, I understand risk. It's possible to be too prudent, uh, but I'm not against GameStop or AMC at these levels. GameStop's currently below where I told you to ring the register in January. It's now getting hammered in after hours trading. Wake up a terrific quarter. Frankly, management did so. They said they'd sell maybe another five billion shares in what's known as an at the money transaction. You probably won't even notice it, frankly, if you're in the stock. These companies now have the ability to reinvent themselves because higher stock prices have allowed them to raise capital. I like that. That said, if you've ridden them up from much lower levels, they take a little off the table. They, 
mean, these stories could always get ding like GameStop's currently doing, even though the numbers were good. And they're bringing in a couple of really seasoned Amazon alums to run the company. I'm talking about great people. You know, there's also an SEC inquiry into the trading of the stock, but it doesn't sound all that serious to me or it would have been sent to justice or they certainly would have disclosed it when the agency contacted them May 26th. And it's voluntary. So I, I'm not worried. Suffice it to say that nothing I heard will stop the people who like it from Wall Street Bets continuing to buy the shares tomorrow morning. Now, let's look at yesterday's meme stock, though, for a second, Wendy's. I've liked that stock for ages. I like eating. They're more important. I like the breakfast initiative. Well, I had a plan, and they just expanded the United Kingdom. I like that they're continuing to prove the taste, especially with my wife's favorite, the Baconator. Yesterday, Wendy's stock went from 23 to 29. Now, I agree with Nelson Peltz, the chairman and major shareholder, who told me today he says the stock's still undervalued. But if I told you, uh, let's say, uh, last night to buy Wendy's at 29, okay, after it had been hyped by the website, and then it went to 25 as it did today, I'd feel terrible. Maybe in the world of Wall Street bets, I'd be applauded for liking the stock at any price, but I suspect somehow many of you would castigate me in this audience. Again, I'm not against risk. I think part of your portfolio should be speculative, what I call uh, your mad money. I am one of the only, I know, I'm the only talking head that I've ever seen who actively encourages speculation, especially for younger investors who have their whole lives ahead of them to make back any losses. However, the throng at Wall Street Bets often thinks that you should be all in on whatever speculative heap they're in love with at the moment. And if you see, if, and if for some reason uh, you think it's a bad idea what they're doing, well, you better shut up or be like me and get tough. To me, it's unwise. This is not a game. People need money to live, to go to school, to pay for vacations, for retirement. If you lose everything, you know what? That's a problem. Look, I'm not a total masochist, just a partial one. I have rhino skin, and I welcome criticism. I'm from Philadelphia. But dogma doesn't cut it. I've been in this business for 40 years. Time and again, I've seen that bulls make money and bears make money, but hogs get slaughtered. The Wall Street Bets crew may not want to hear it. Uh, to them, I'm not another, I'm just an out-of-touch baby boomer. That's all I am. But if they don't take some profits while they have them, then sometimes I think they're going to regret it. The bottom line, I can't believe I need to say this. But if you're trading stocks, the goal is actually to make money. And eventually that means you need to take some profits because it is prudent to preserve your gains and you don't have a profit until you take it off the table. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.